Okay, um, good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Reeder, and my project was the annual report of Guardian on condition of ward. And my client was Annette Farden, and she is the deputy director of Legal Aid of Nebraska. Um, why did I pick this project? Um, I have a special place in my heart for guardianships. I spent um, two years volunteering at the Pro Se Adult Guardianship Help Desk at the Daily Center. Um, I essentially assisted Pro Se litigants through the entire process of petitioning for an adult guardianship. Um, that included everything from doing fee waivers to actually filing a petition to paying the sheriff's fees to serve notice. Um, in my experience, many of the pro se litigants are illiterate um, or uneducated and they need a lot of um, hand holding, so um, I was really excited to do this project. And it can be an incredibly confusing and long process. Um, sometimes it can take up to two hours in the daily center to do the whole thing, uh, depending on what time they get to the courthouse. Um, so just briefly, what is guardianship? Um, it's basically just a legal process where the court appoints a competent individual to make personal and or financial decisions for um, a mentally um, incapacitated individual. Um, and that individual is known as the ward. Um, the person that's appointed can be anyone. Basically, they don't have to be related. Um, they can be a friend or an aunt, uncle. Um, in Nebraska, there is a huge difference between a guardian and a conservator. Um, a guardian basically takes care of personal and sometimes financial decisions for the ward, but the conservator only handles the estate or financial transactions. Um, and just some of the sources, I spoke with Annette, she was incredibly helpful. Um, the Supreme Court of Nebraska website was also incredibly helpful. Um, I looked up case law and the relevant Nebraska guardianship statute. Um, just a little bit of some specifics about the report. Um, it's actually one of ten forms that must be completed yearly. Um, guardians are reminded are actually reminded by the court when to file this form. So users, that shouldn't be a question when they approach the form. They should already have been appointed. I do address those questions in the interview, though. Um, it's basically a yearly report to the court on current physical, monetary, and emotional conditions of the ward. And it only applies to guardians, conservators um, do not need to file this form. Um, it's a short form, it contains 16 questions, many are in long answer format, it asks for the opinions of the guardian essentially, um, and there's also like multiple choice questions that they just need to circle. Um, and some, just some examples of the questions, and I'll show you the form, um, just like current living arrangements, the ward's current mental and physical health, and whether the guardianship should be. Um, the justice problem, basically the main issue that Annette told me was there was a huge difficulty with legal use in the form. Um, just some examples was like determining whether a ward is still a minor. Um, complex words like what is an estate, what is accounting, what is a conservator. Um, sometimes users are unsure if they should fill out the form. And my solution was to educate them by providing many pop-up definitions, um, anticipating user questions, and kind of simplifying the language for them. Um, and Annette also told me that it's an extremely common form. So the solution, obviously, was this interview that could be put up online, um, allows easy access to everyone, and it would also alleviate some of the common questions that she gets about the form. form. This is what the form looks like. Um, it's about four pages and most of the questions you just need to check off, kind of do a short explanation. That's the form. And I'll go to my uh, managing interview. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole interview, but I'll show you a couple um, this is the intro. I basically just try to explain what the form is used for and who should be using it. Um, this is kind of an example. Um, a lot of users probably won't know what a word is, so I'm trying to find a word. And it's basically a person that you can assign to take care of legally. And
Okay, these are the questions. If they pick conservator, it will keep them out of the interview because, as I stated before, conservators do not need to fill out the form. And I do provide a definition of what a guardian and conservator is. And if they kick conservator, um, before kicking them out, it obviously make sure that they didn't make any mistakes. And if they click continue, I have it linked to the um, Supreme Court of Nebraska website. And this website is awesome. It basically provides everything that they need to petition for a guardianship. Obviously, they need to be the, the legal guardian. Um, honestly, the user should not, shouldn't be an issue, but just to make sure that the correct person is using the form, I wanted to reiterate that. Okay, the form uh, must be filed within 30 days after the anniversary of their appointment date. Um, and this is a yearly form. They will get reminded by the court. Again, you know, what is an accounting and provide that definition? So those are just some of the basic questions to make sure that you use the form. Um, okay, so this question, they need to be filing this form in the county where they originally filed their petition. They can continue with the interview. Um, so if, for example, this question says, are you filing this report in the correct county? Um, how do I know I'm filing in the correct county? I provide a link to where they can look up their case, and it will tell them what county um, they should be in. If they are not in the correct county and they hit no, I basically tell them that it's a standard form in the state of Nebraska and that they can, can continue with the interview, however, they can't file where they are now. So they can continue. This basic information. Okay, now this gets into the award information. What type of home does the ward live in? Um, I provide a selection list. Okay, we'll, we'll stop there. Um, but this is what the completed form looks like when it's all populated. And as you can see, I used X's for the multiple choice questions. There it is. That's it. Um, does anyone have any questions? You mentioned an accounting where the question was like, did you bring your accounting to court today? Well, if they're filling it out at home, that's kind of an awkward question because they could have the accounting with them, but do they need to bring it actually to court when they file this? Yes. So that might make it clear, like, this assumes that they're at court filling it out the day they're supposed to turn it in, rather than, you know, you're at home, it's two weeks before it's due. It's just the phrasing of that question is a little off. Okay. And maybe just to remind them that when they actually go file, bring that with you. Yeah. Where you ask, what's your relationship to the ward? And it says relative and guardian. What if you're a guardian who is a relative? Can you choose both of them? Um, I don't know. It was just one or two before that. They can, it can be a relative as the guardian. So you can check both of them. I don't know, remember what question you're talking about, but... Would it make a difference? No, it shouldn't. Okay. Any other questions? I think you're pretty good, though. 